cannot put into words how excited I am for today's video. So this C200 compressor did not start life off looking like a full-blown rice car. It probably had a loving and caring family for most of its life until it broke down and got left to die. Don't scratch it. <laughs> until about a year ago when I decided to use this beast to pull it out and give it a new lease on life. Fast forward about a year later, I pulled the monstrous 4 liter 6 banger out of the Falcon and stuffed it into this W203. And since you last saw the car, I completely finished the cooling system. So radiator is mounted, coolant tank is mounted, all the hoses are connected. I also had to tap into the head at the back where the original water temperature sensor went to get my own universal water temperature sensor in there. So that's ready to go. I also had to tap into the block to where the original oil pressure sensor was to get a simple oil pressure switch in there. Now with all that being ready, we should be able to start getting some fluids into the car, checking over if it leaks, getting it fired up and see if it'll move. That is, of course, if nothing leaks, but I think I'm going to get started on the gearbox. That's the most difficult part, so I need to jack up the car, fill up the gearbox with ATF because we removed all the lines and everything needs to be bled or filled up with ATF again. So I want to get that done and then we'll move on to getting some coolant in there, getting some fuel in there, getting some power steering fluid in there, checking if we don't have any leaks. Then we can get it up to temperature, let it sit down idle for a few minutes, check if the water temperature gauge works after starting it up we can check if the oil pressure switch works so that little red light on the dashboard should go out we also need to make sure that the ecu is in fact switching on the radiator fan once the car is up to temperature and then we'll put it into gear and see if it'll move let's get started on getting some atf in there So the way I do this is I get the ATF into this water bottle and then I use the air compressor to put air into that little hole that pressurizes this bottle and pushes the ATF into the gearbox. I'll show you. Oh, that stinks. Just like everything else, it's super tight in here. Let's get this bottle. Get this hose into the full hole. Get in there. Then give it some air and see what happens. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> well, it should be good. Let's close it up and move on. Made a huge mess once again. 
just can't have nice things. Well, at least it's full. <coughs> Right, so gearbox is ready to go. So what I've noticed is if the gearbox fluid is low, the gearbox kind of slips. And like I had the car on an angle like that, I kind of overfold it to prepare just the lines and everything to get them fold up as well. Next up, I'm gonna get some fuel in there because I know this fuel tank doesn't leak. So let's get that ready to go. Still has some fuel in it, but give her a bit more. About a half a tank. Ready. Next fluid going in, some multi-purpose anti-freeze. Please don't leak. I can hear it going into the radiator. Might stop and check for leaks. No leaks yet. Let's keep going. On the other hand, we do have a freaking coolant leak. So let me try and figure this out. It's right on the um, thermostat housing over here. So yeah. Okay, so I just removed this cover. It seems like the leak is coming from the back of this housing. So that's going to need to come off for me to fix it. So I think I'm just going to send it like this. I just want to test the car. So let's get the power steering fluid in there and see what happens. Now well, that didn't take much. And I don't see any leaks yet. We'll see when we fire it up. I think that'll go down and then we'll give it some more. All right, so I think all the fluids are ready for some action. It's pretty unfortunate about that coolant leak, but we'll fix that. For now, I connected up the battery, so I guess let's give it a go and see if it'll fire up and see what happens. Oh, and another thing I did was I got a gas pedal in here. So unfortunately I couldn't use the W203 gas pedal. I had to reuse the Ford's one, but we have that going for us. But let's give it a go. I'm gonna keep my eye on that oil pressure light. That needs to go out. And then I'll jump out, check for any leaks. Can't think of a single thing that can go wrong. Here we go. Sounds a bit rough. The oil light doesn't work. Oh, there it is. Maybe I should just check. Okay, so I added a bit more power steering fluid and the fan belt is acting a bit weird. It's not like where it's supposed to be. It was also rubbing up against one of the transmission lines. So I just fixed that. Let's try this again. Starts pretty easy for sitting as long as it did.
temperature gauge is working. I decided before I go and do all that while we have it ready to go I jacked up the back for safety reasons I'm gonna see if it goes into gear and if the brakes work very important <laughs> So I'm fairly certain the battery isn't charging. I did make a small wiring change over there. And then the spark plugs, seems like I had cylinder three and five swapped around. So I just fixed that. And then I have the laptop in here now to check on that alternator if it's charging. And then I went ahead and got the battery charged a bit. Only charged it for about an hour. Hopefully that's enough to just do this test real quick. So that's a bit of progress at least the uh, wheels do turn but like i said i think i mentioned this before i think the gearbox needs to be bled somehow i had this issue when i first got the ford got it back on the ground let's try this again at least i do know the brakes work so if things go south <laughs> How freaking sick is that? After more than a year of blood, sweat and tears, all this is finally coming together. After the first initial test, I had to remove the thermostat housing, get that resealed. And then I also had to remake this hose because the Ford hose well, had a crack in it. So yeah, that was leaking as well. This might also be leaking. Huh, definitely have a few things to still iron out and then on the gearbox so I thought that I filled it up but apparently wasn't enough fluid so I had to add another liter of ATF in there. After I got that sorted I had another go at moving the car.
second time around already went way better than the first try i still need to add a little bit more atf in there maybe i don't know we'll still figure that out and then when you look over here i don't know some of you might remember when i made that hole over there to the transmission i need to get to that plug and then get started on wiring up the transmission just connect a few wires and then the second gear shifter should work i'm really hoping it's just gonna be that easy connect up a few wires and then we'll have first gear second gear and maybe a third gear but i'll tell you what during this whole process i had my doubts if this thing would ever work but there we have it the c400 is just about ready to have some fun so hopefully the next time you guys see this thing we'll be taking it out on its first test drive thoroughly testing the thing if it works like it should and then we can get into a bunch of other things i want to do to the car body wise like fixing that hood painting and a bunch more ideas i have on this thing this is only the beginning so with that i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit that like button and then i'll see you in the next one peace